Depression affects over 17 million people each year and anxiety affects over 40 million people each year in the US. And unfortunately, these numbers aren't getting any better. In fact, they're actually getting worse. One of the trends we've seen in the last few decades is an increase in our sedentary lifestyle. And although there are many things that can cause and contribute mental health issues, one of the things is this lack of movement. So in this video, I'm gonna look at the impacts of walking and whether we can help or fix depression and anxiety with physical activity. So if you suffer with mental health or you just want to maintain an optimal level of mental health, this video is for you. Let's get started. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Hume. I'm a chiropractor currently based in the Oxfordshire area. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at depression and anxiety and the impact that physical exercise or specifically walking has on these two very, very common conditions. So we know that we get changes within the brain when someone experiences depression and anxiety, particularly for a prolonged period of time. But it's very helpful for us to know where exactly in the brain that is so that we can better target our treatments. So where is depression and anxiety located in the brain? Well, the frontal lobe, so the front part of your cortex, is a part that is largely responsible and affected in mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety. This is an area of the brain that is concerned with your executive functions. Your executive functions are going to include things such as logic, the ability to be able to plan and be self-aware. It is really the part of the brain that's gonna make us human and the thing that's gonna differentiate us from animals. The frontal cortex will then also link and talk to an area of the brain that we call the amygdala. The amygdala is part of the uh, the brain that we call the limbic system, which is your basically your emotional system. So within that limbic system, you've got your amygdala. Your amygdala is important for emotion and specifically fear. And so if the frontal cortex isn't working very well and it's not communicating to the amygdala very well, then that can lead to unnecessary fear, which then leads to anxiety. This is part of the reason why depression and anxiety quite often come together, but another reason for it is because the cause can be fairly similar. So what impact therefore does physical exercise or walking have on the brain? And how does this relate to depression and anxiety? And should we use it as a way to treat depression and anxiety? Well, a lot of the benefits of walking I've gone through in previous videos, you can see one of them just up here. But one of the main benefits of walking is it's going to increase blood flow. And increased blood flow is gonna get more blood and therefore more nutrients and oxygen to the tissues within your body. But specifically in this example, it's gonna increase the blood flow to our brains. This is necessary because the frontal cortex, a part that is affected, is often decreased in its function and therefore also decreased in its blood supply. So therefore, by taking regular walks, we can promote the blood flow to the area of the brain to then help to restore its function. Also, by walking, we create what we call a hydraulic wave. This is essentially the idea that as we walk, we increase the blood to flow upwards in our body, which then helps to get the blood more into our brains as opposed to lower down in our body. That's gonna further increase that blood flow to the brain, which is then going to help to restore its function. Another massive benefit of walking is that we're massively stimulating the brain. The brain needs consistent stimulation to remain healthy. We're gonna get the stimulation from things like vision, from hearing, from your balance organs to sense your, the movement of your head. But one of the most powerful inputs into your brain is going to be movement. And this is gonna come from all of the hundreds of joints that, that are in your body. And the joints that are gonna stimulate your brain the most are gonna be the ones in your spine, specifically the higher up you go, so particularly the top of the neck. This is one of the reasons why the chiropractic adjustment is so powerful. It's because of the impact that it has on the brain as we stimulate the spine and restore function to the spine. But when we walk, we are also moving the spine 
and therefore we're getting some consistent stimulation to the brain. So by walking, we're going to increase that blood flow, increase the nutrients and oxygen, and we're also going to increase the stimulation neurologically. This is all things that's going to help to restore the function back into the brain. Physical exercise also decreases your cortisol levels. Cortisol is your stress hormone. So by decreasing this hormone, we can lower stress levels, which will particularly help with anxiety. And finally, by walking, you're gonna increase the sunlight, the natural sunlight that you're gonna get. This is important for increasing vitamin D, which is very essential for your nervous system, but also for improving mood. And as well, as I spoke about earlier, the sunlight is gonna be another stimulation to your brain through the vision, which is gonna help keep it healthy. So we know the area of the brain that's impacted, and we know that physical exercise has an impact on the brain, but does this actually work? Does walking actually improve depression and anxiety symptoms? Well, fortunately, some smart people out there have done some studies on this, and there was a systematic review done in 2012 that looked at the effects of walking on depression symptoms. A systematic review is one of the highest levels of research that you can do, and essentially it's gonna look at a whole range of different types of papers and then take a conclusion from all of them. They concluded by saying that walking has a statistically significant effect on the depression symptoms. Therefore, it looks very, very likely that walking is going to massively improve depression, anxiety. Now, when it comes to mental health, there are a whole variety of things that firstly can cause the problem and secondly, a whole variety of things that can help. However, when it comes to walking, this is gonna be one aspect, and this really needs to be put together with other things to really help you. But certainly we know that walking is going to have a big impact and generally physical exercise and being outside when it's done regularly and consistently. So if you are someone that does suffer with mental health, I encourage you just to go for a walk. Just do it every day and make a habit of it. Make it a realistic, target so whether it's just five minutes each day or half an hour each day from my point of view it doesn't matter the main thing you do at the beginning is make it into a habit so that you actually do it every day then if you start with five minutes then you slowly increase the length of time that you go and then over time you can work your way up to go into half an hour or an hour in my book i think that the further you go the better results you're likely to get but it's important that it's done regularly not just every now and again for a long period of time. If you need help in trying to form this habit, then I've done a video which you can see up here on how to make exercise into a habit. I go through a book that I read by James Clear about how to make something that you wanna do a habit that you're actually gonna consistently do in the future. And walking is gonna be one of them. I normally tell my patients to walk around half an hour each day, at least once a day. But you can certainly do a lot more than that. And as I said, the more you do, the better results you're likely to get. If you are someone that has experienced mental health in the past and you've used physical exercise to help yourself, please do put your stories in the comments because this is going to help other people. We can be massively inspired and motivated when we see it work for other people. So if this has worked for you, like it has done for many, many other people, like that study that we saw, then please do put it in the comments below and help to inspire other people. I hope this has been useful. Again, if you like this type of content, then please do subscribe to see more content like this one and if you've got any video suggestions I am very open to doing and what you want me to do so please again put that in the comments as well and I will see you on the next video take care and bye-bye